that's discovering us. Maybe it's a bad idea to do this in the middle of a beehive. <laughs> Ta-da! Hello, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. We have a slug sent to us by Kip Warwolf. I don't know if that's his real name or not. That uses a heavy hitter slug that is just even heavier now. Pick the unit of measurement suitable to you. The interior cavity of this slug is filled with birdshot and 3-in-1 oil. While that may sound nefarious to some people, the premise behind the slug is to create a uh, slug that can be used by firefighters to set backfires at long range. He's hoping it'll catch things on fire, in other words. All right, test number one at a large wooden block. We got Greg out here launching these things. There he is. What's going on, Tough Leader folks? <laughs> and we got a lot of bees out here, too. We got a lot of bees. We got a swarm of bees. There's a lot of bees. Oh, there's one in my ear. Well, hopefully this 12-gauge uh, slug that contains nuclear fission. <laughs> will, uh, it's the diesel round, I think we can call it. Huh? I, I don't know. It's an experiment worthy of trying. <laughs> He's aiming at the wooden block. He does not have his, t his normal ears today, but... I got ears, though, everybody. Relax. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right. Here we go at the block. Oh, my goodness. They're very heavy. That is a one hell of a kick. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, let's take a look at what happened. Here comes the slug. It's actually stable in flight and it looks relatively accurate too. I need to explain the theory of how these are supposed to work. Upon impact, a lot of heat is generated from compression and friction, and that needs to heat that oil to its flash point, the point where no external flame is needed to ignite it. It has to remain at that high temperature while it mixes with the air around it to reach the right air fuel mixture. This is not... Okay, I'm ready. Here we go, at the plate. Ah, Lord. That has got a thump to it. <laughs> Here we go, at the plate. Again, we see the cool vapor trail of the atomized 3-in-1 oil just pouring out of the nose of the slug. It's not supposed to do that. So, obviously, during the high G acceleration, the epoxy seals are being damaged. Well, we had to move locations because uh, Greg got attacked by bee a swarm of bees. Yeah. It was just like in the cartoons where they, they <laughs> flew in the air in a big swarm and formed a, an arrow yeah. and uh, that all pointed at his face. They came right to me. Yeah, we got one in the uh, right here in a bingo wing, <laughs> one on my right palm, and then the sniper bee got me right here between the eyes. <laughs> so uh, we have changed our location. Yeah, we got run out of there by bees. I thought bees were nice, you know, but they're actually very evil. So... Three bee stings and some punishing recoil for you guys. These things have one hell of a kick to them. Yeah, they're very heavy. They're very heavy. Well, let's give them a try, though, and see if we can... Uh... Uh, so far, they haven't worked yet, but <laughs> on the positive note, they've left some cool vapor trails. <laughs> yeah, it's good to get oil in the air. So. Yeah, yeah, it's good to breathe. <laughs> Got to do some vaping while we're out here. How far are we, about 30 yards now? About 30 yards, yeah, I paced it off uh, 25 and then took a few more steps. So. Okay, gotcha. Okay, let's see if we can hit those. I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, my. That is a horse kick to the shoulder. Oh, my. For these to function as a viable firefighting tool for the firefighters to remotely set these backfires, they have to just impact the dirt and ignite. But even hitting steel plates and big chunks of wood, covered with gasoline, by the way, uh, does not create any fires. We do see two constants. They are relatively accurate, and they always, always leave the vapor trail. The failure of the epoxy seal happens every time. These are all the same. Uh, the first are loaded with the same powder load, and the last two are, are hotter ones, so... Great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, 
But they re recoil. The recoil is pretty bad. Yeah, the recoil is stout. <laughs> to put it lightly, it's uh, it's similar to say maybe like a Toyota Corolla running into your shoulder <laughs> forty miles an hour. <laughs> okay, I am ready. We're almost there. Some of the more recoily rounds we've shot out here. As you can see, the slug is still traveling at a supersonic speed upon impact. It's dragging a massive shockwave across the ground. The impact does generate enough heat to turn the oil into a large white smoke cloud, but not enough to reach that flashpoint and create a flame. Good news, this one's even more powerful, Greg. Good news. <laughs> you need to get, we need to get you one of those butt pads that Danny has, those, those big cushion crutch hand. I'm just gonna take a couch cushion and duct it into my yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, still at the same distance of about 30 yards. Okay. And I'm ready. Now, if there's any irony here, it's the fact that these were designed to start fires, but they seem to be perfectly safe to use around uh, dry grass and even gasoline-soaked targets. And inadvertently, Kip created a slug that is kind of acts like a tracer, leaving a, a, a vapor cloud in its wake without any fire. At least there's no bees over here. Yeah. Maybe there's a bunch of black widows you can stick your arm in that bush and get, you black know. Black widows, probably an alligator or two. Yeah. Maybe a manta ray or something. <laughs> Not. They, they say guns are dangerous, but I'd say insects are more dangerous. I was a little more worried about that swarm of bees than I was any firearm. Or, actually, driving out here is more of a, <laughs> more dangerous. That's true. Out in the savannah. This is our last one. So this was the red line, however. So this one's got more nuclear in it. Yeah, that's the good news. The bad so. news is. It, it'll make you make those bee stings, you know, forget about those, I think. <laughs> yeah. This one is particularly heavy and uh, I would expect a lot of pain. Just, Woo! I just gotta be, I just gotta be straight up blunt with you. Good yeah. to have a disclaimer, yeah. Yeah. Go. Red line, more nuclear. Oh, yeah. Oh. I had a little bit more. I only had about 8% more kick. Okay. That's it. That's the good news. Woo! Oh my gosh. Still alive. Well, we didn't start any fires or anything, but still the results are, I think, are interesting. More nuclear. Oh, yeah. I need to note that these slugs will, are not for sale. They may never be for sale. And it was just a test that Kip wanted us to do. Very interesting test with uh, results that we did not expect. What did we learn today? What did we learn today? There are no friendly bees. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, don't take bee advice from Jeff. No. <laughs> Jeff says, hey, they're friendly bees. We'll shoot, Hello? we'll shoot between the two clusters of hives <laughs> and we won't upset them. They don't uh, They don't mind the noise of a shotgun. <laughs> but uh, as I went down range to pick up a plate off the ground, one zapped me right there. And I think after that... I yeah, they, there me. was like five or six just swarming around your head constantly. That was good times. One got me right here. I smacked off my own glasses and, and popped the lens out, so this is what we do for you guys. Bees are not your friend. No, no. And um, Next time, let's go into a field of snapping turtles and <laughs> shoot their piranhas, maybe, or good. Or, or a, a, a wasp nest, you know, those are wonderful insects, this, too. The scientific thing we learned, however, was that these rounds, uh, they leave a cool trail, they leave a cool impact downrange on a steel plate. Uh, we have not been able to see any giant ball of fire. So. No. I, I mean, on some of the impacts, I did see a large white puff of, you know, like they were trying to, you know, they yeah, almost they reached that off. flash point. Yeah. White puff, by the way, was actually my uh, dancing name in the 80s when I was an exotic dancer. White puff. <laughs> but, uh, hey, still, these rounds have one of the baddest ass names on the internet. The War Wolf. No, it was so, a heavy hitter. Well, by war wolf. By war wolf. Yeah. Uh, war wolf is a, is a badass name, and they sent me a pretty cool T-shirt. So uh, war wolf. <laughs> you have to say it with that. It's a trademark. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no ball of fire. Um, however, swarm of bees. <laughs>
Good times. I haven't been stung by a bee since I was a little tiny kid, and today I got three, three or maybe four, because I think I feel one on my palm. So uh, they caught up with me for all those I years. I feel terrible. I feel terrible. <laughs> all right, folks. We'll see you next we'll time. See you on the next one when Jeff puts us into a herd of rhinoceroses. <laughs>